All right, we are live. Good morning, Linda Hollander. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. And Jeff is Dr. Jeff is just finishing up a call, so he'll be here in just one minute. So, um, this welcome everyone. This is our uh, first of a series of eight uh, uh, programs in the uh, health and wellness. Uh, hold on, here comes Jeff. There he is. Yay. Yay. Give us one more minute to get set here and we will be good to go. How no are you doing problem. this morning, Jeff? I'm doing great. I got two power women in front of me. I've got to be doing great. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. And Thank let you. me just get it set up so it's really pretty for us to all look at together. And we'll be good to go. There we go. Okay. How's that? Good. Looking good. Welcome, everybody, to our first uh, live stream in a series of eight uh, seminars that we're doing or webinars that we're doing here on Fridays. And this is our financial wellness conversation. So let me just introduce myself and then I'll have the two of you introduce yourselves and then we'll get started. First of all, you're doing well today, you guys. Are you doing all right? doing great. Good. Good to hear. Make sure we can hear each other. So my name is Cheryl and uh, I am producing a project called Joyly and we are launching um, our very first live event, hopefully all you know things aligning on May 30th. And whether we do that or not, we are going to do a live stream. So either way, we're gonna have a, a pretty cool event. So um, I believe that when you focus on whatever you're focusing on, you'll get more of the same. So um, I figured out my whole life that I never seemed to quite be focusing on the right thing. And, and I was always pushing and pulling and struggling and looking for the answers. So I decided one day that um, when I hiked outside and when I hung out with my family and when I, you know, felt joy inside, I started seeing the stars align. So I created a company where basically all we were talking about is joy. So um, the fact of the matter is things in the world are a little bit upside down. And so that's why we started this uh, seminar. I'm, I'm disheartened and I feel the world um, going on around me and I can't help but think that we just need to step up and uh, focus on a lot of what's working. But the financial situation is why I brought you guys together here today. So why don't, before I, before I go on, um, Linda, why don't you just take a minute, introduce yourself, and then Hi. I have a question for both of you. Okay, my name is Linda Hollander. My company is Sponsor Concierge. I've been helping people tap into the awesome power of sponsors for over 20 years. Now, what is a corporate sponsor? A corporate sponsor is somebody who pays you to connect with your core consumers. They want to pay you because you can connect them with people who buy things. Who can work with corporate sponsors? Businesses, authors, speakers, influencers. Uh, <laughs> I work a lot with the event producers and the event industry. Hopefully, we'll talk about that today because I think it will come back. Uh, and then lastly, nonprofit charity. So that's what we're going to talk about because I have sponsors and that's what's getting me through these times. So sponsors is a great additional revenue stream for you. All right. We'll talk about that in just a minute. All right. Jeff, Dr. Jeff, you could just introduce yourself, please. Appreciate it. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey McGee. You can find out more about what I do at my name, jeffreymcgee.com or through Professional Performance Magazine. A lot of what Linda just said, I think is very much on the table today. You're right in terms of how we all look at whatever it is we do. Before you run from what you do, my, uh, my advice would be double down on what was working for you 35 days ago is what you need to double down on today. Because if it was working 35 days ago, it will still work for you today. Just you have to figure out how do I repurpose it? So Linda is exactly that. How do I take people that might've been sponsoring events, trade shows, conferences, conventions, events in a traditional way that 35 days ago, everyone was excited for the upcoming event uh, and who they were partnered with. Well, a lot of all of those went to zero in the past 15 days. And they're probably going to stay at zero for the next 15 days. And as Linda said, I hope they come back and they will. If you're an old person watching this video, what I mean by old is you're uh, 40 years of age. You're old because if you're under 40, you didn't grasp what Linda just said. And that was 9-11 is exactly what's happening right now. 9-11 hit. Everyone freaked out. The conventions and meeting space went to zero. Businesses went to zero. 
you know, 2008, 9, and 10, we had a huge recession. Everyone freaked out again and things went to zero. All of the pandemic, whether it's legitimate or it's being, you know, hiked up to be significantly worse than it really is, no matter what your view is, it's doing the exact same thing. It's causing everyone to freak out. And what happens, again, part of the, the theme of today's talk about financials is, again, I'm a non-financial person. So everything I'm going to share with you has nothing to do with I am a financial person, therefore buy my portfolio or my product or what have you. It's common sense. Uh, the need for sponsorship though. So again, as Linda just said, is huge. So if I have a magazine where Marriott and, and uh, Mercedes are the primary advertisers, we have a half a million you know, subscribers to the magazine. It's very substantial. Well, in the past, maybe I didn't have a lot of sponsors or advertisers, but I might now be thinking, okay, wait a minute, Linda, what you do, I may now be another vertical channel for you and your people to reach the marketplace that want to reach them. So all that we're looking at in the marketplace today is how we do something different. So that's uh, that's my angle. What I do is I work with business owners and leaders and military generals um, across the globe every day, whether it's through digital delivery or live on stage delivery. And I do uh, basically work in the talent development area. I do leadership development and sales. That's the two places I live. It's the books I've written. This morning, I've already been on text uh, with the adjutant general for the National Guard. That's a senior military leader for the entire state of Connecticut. And I've been on text communications with the adjutant general for Vermont on exactly what Linda just opened up. And that is what I was doing 35 days ago has changed because of sure what you said with the pandemic has changed everyone's mindset. And so a lot of times I find myself just playing connector with someone has a need. Who do I know and how do I connect them? I'm a big believer in optimistic views and abundance mentality. And sometimes it's nothing to deal with directly you. It's you connect people together. It all comes back in the end. All right. Well, we are going to have uh, each of you uh, kind of just share the heartbeat of America, if you will, and kind of where you see us uh, going, you know, in our businesses. If we're, you know, trying to figure out what's next. People are people have asked me, like, what how do we how do we sell? How do we ask people for money? How do we get new clients? How, you know, what is the conversation? So I want each of you to speak to that. But before we do that, Dr. Jeff, could you just answer a question for me? What is the quote or the, uh, or the conversation that you had with Dr. Seuss that we could learn from today? Dr. Seuss, what a, what a, so when he passed away, I was sitting on an American Airlines plane, had USA Today in my hand, I'd picked up, I sat down to read it. And the uh, interview that they had repurposed on USA Today was the last interview evidently that was had with Dr. Seuss. And it was my interview. So it was kind of like, whoa, cool. I made it big time. So I'm, I'm a young kid. But Dr. Seuss, interestingly enough, to answer that, it is cool. So Dr. Seuss is actually pronounced Seuss, but we all call it Seuss. And Dr. Uh, you know, Theodore Geisel uh, from Dartmouth was basically a graphic drawer. So he drew uh, line art and clothes and stuff for Madison Avenue, World War II time, uh, and was doing some graphic sorts of works. And long story of it, uh, he wanted to get it somewhat into the cartoon sort of area, but no one was taking him seriously. World War II happens. He's doing the movie tone reels, which that's the way you found out what was going on during World War II, is if you went to the movie houses, they had those movie reels that would go before and after the movie. He was a kind of a producer of one of those and one of the early people he hired to narrate some of those video, those videos, those movies uh, was a person <laughs> by the name of Ronnie Reagan. So that was kind of a fun little, uh, yeah, That's little story he shared. So he was ah. full of stories. Yeah. And, and the, the doctor was made up. He never had a doctor's degree. So after World War II, the way he resold himself and repackaged himself, which goes into the spirit of this interview today with the three of us is looking at what you already have and how do you repackage it? How do you repurpose? And I don't mean anything in terms of any negative intent with what I'm about to say, but how do you do that to get someone's attention? Because no one was taking himself seriously because they knew the Geisel, Theodore Geisel. So he said, okay, I'm going to drop that name. I'm going to pick up my mom's maiden name, basically last name of Soy, Seuss, and I'm going to give myself a doctorate and I'm going to call myself Dr. Seuss. And that's how he repitched himself and Boom, that's history's arrested. You know, he never had any kids. He married a lady that had kids. Right. Um, and all of his books, if you read them through the adult lens, which a lot of people don't, they read them as a child's book. They're great stories. But if you go back and read each book, I, I would encourage you to open up the Dr. Seuss book, look at the copyright date of when it was written, then ask yourself through the history lens what was going on in the world at the time, then read that book. Each one of his books was a political commentary on what was going on in the world, whether it was racism, sexism, communism. So if you reread the books from that date line, you go, holy crap, you know, Green Eggs and Ham is about Russia and the United States, etc. 
So, so when we there come you back, go. When, you come back, when we come back to you on the next time, I want you at the very end of this to do, to offer us which book we should read right now in times in these times. So we'll come back to that. All right, Linda, yeah. let's uh, before we get in. So before you do your little 10 minutes that I've asked you to do, would you mind briefly sharing the little a story about you growing up as a short frizzy hair young lady and how you got how you got to today yeah okay well i have about 10 hair products on right now because i can't get to my hairdresser so uh, i've got to kind of do it myself uh and i have naturally curly hair so to look manageable and look decent i have to put a lot of products on uh but <laughs> um my father was uh five foot three right now I'm not even four foot tall. I'm sorry, I'm not even five feet tall. I'm 4'11". Uh, and basically, I grew up not knowing anything about business thinking. Business was completely boring because anybody who saw me draw, which is where I relate to Dr. Seuss, anybody who saw me paint said, my dear, you have to become a professional artist. And that's what I studied in college. Uh, I didn't take one business course, but then I got out of college and said, "Uh oh, I got to make a living. And I sold a few pieces, but I had enough money to go to the market when you could go to the market. Interesting. And, uh, then I said, oh, God, I've got to learn about business. And you know what? Business is just as creative as art. Business is just as stimulating as art. And I think the more creative you are, the better you're going to do in business. P people are pivoting. Uh, mm -hmm. As Dr. Jeff said, uh, you know, I want you to create future income. That lady that I just told you about that does my hair. Yeah. She said, well, since you can't come into my salon, I'll sell I'll sell you a custom color kit. So she's pivoting. She's I being love creative. It. Yeah. Great. All right. Good news. All right. Give us your uh, let's talk about business and kind of like what's the heartbeat for you right now and what are your clients saying? And, you know, are people actively in the sales mode? What's going on? Uh, as far as selling, you know, people are doing it, but you want to be the content queen or the content king right now. You really want to establish yourself as an influencer. We want to create future income. Now is the time to write that book. Now is the time to get guests for your show. Now is the time to spiff up your social media pages because uh, on LinkedIn, if you don't have a good profile, you're not going to do that well. So do all those things you've been meaning to do right now. Keep yourself out there. Write articles. Put them on the Internet. Um, and re then when sponsorship comes back, when business comes back, you will have the advantage because you will be able to hit the ground running. Got it. So, so what is happening? Like, just give me the, a little bit of, of about the, a pulse of your business. So you, you are events, you know, always at events. So what's happening right now for you? Like on okay. a day to day basis? Oh, well, okay. So events, I just, before we got on today, I had another event that got rescheduled that I was supposed to speak at. I've had about four events rescheduled. Now for the people listening, uh, like you, if you do your own events, please reschedule. Do not cancel them because when you cancel, I mean, there's a lot of anxiety that happens. Uh, the two of my events, one got canceled and I emailed the lady who put it together. I said, when is the next event? And she never got back to me. Um, but one was rescheduled and the new date is on the website. So do that. People also ask me, are sponsors looking at proposals right now? I want you to put the pause on sending out proposals right now. So there's two phases of sponsorship. One is preparation and proposal, and then one of them is outreach. So if you're in the outreach phase, you know, communicate with your current sponsors. But if I haven't heard about you before, just hold off just a little bit because there's something coming out every day. If you are in the preparation and proposal stage, now is the perfect time to be writing your proposals for getting sponsors. I think the event business will come back. It'll come. Uh, the American people are the most resilient people on the planet. It's going to come back in a big way. People always want to connect with each other because we are social beings. So, so preparation and proposal is, um, these are people you've met, like continue, continue sending, continue asking, yep. continue, continue, continue. continue. I, I, I hear the, uh, people have kind of been stuck mm -hmm. in that. So I, that's, I wanted to get clar clarity on that. Yeah. It feels, uh, feels awkward, but like the National Speakers Association says, 
you know, now's the time to just say, how can I help? And it might be a freebie thing. You might have to make a pitch that you wouldn't normally do or, you know, a, a, create a strategy together that that works for everybody. And it might not mean dollars at the moment. Right, Jeff, what do you think about that? Absolutely. So let me piggyback on what Ms. Hollander has just you know, shared, because it is about not giving up. It's about recalibrating the mind to think differently. What trajectory are you on? Again, if we back up 35 days ago, everyone, uh, you know, basically on the planet, truth be told, but especially in, in North America and especially in the United States and just keep bringing that smaller and smaller down to where you are, basically, you know, your region, your state, your community. Uh, 35 you know, days ago, no one would have thought we would be having these kinds of conversations because really it was on no one's radar. Mm -hmm. So that it doesn't mean you freak out. And I agree. Cancellation means I quit. I give up. So I would post, you know, the question just as what we heard is what was the reason for the event before? Because if you're canceling it now because mm -hmm. you said there's no need for it, then guess what? 35 days ago, you sucked them too. And I guess you shouldn't have been doing it. But if 35 days ago, there's a reason for it, then That's canceling true. is not it. It's, it's reschedule. It's, it's, look at it maybe don't even reschedule maybe now it's just a new delivery such as right here live streaming or going to a you know zoom call or different global you know plat video platforms and how do you do virtual town halls there's a several conferences that have reached out to me in the last week that have canceled their physical event and now saying you know we'd like to have you on our virtual platform so the first out of my head one if it makes sense and their audience is my audience so the avatars line up then i want to be there but the thought of my head is so that's interesting all the people that were physically going to be there are now unemployed. They have no uh, nowhere else to be. They're landlocked too. And they don't want to be on your virtual stage. What idiots. So yeah, they're not willing in giving. And I do believe in give, give, give before you ask, ask, ask. So those are the elements, uh, you know, to the question, what I'm doing and what I see my clients doing, or how do we stay in front of our clients? Um, I, I would give a couple of very specific things. So one, you ask, you know, what's my favorite book? So I'm going to actually recommend my own book. Okay. So that's the book you want to go buy. You can, get, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Barnes and Noble. That's the only personal success book I've written. I think right now for a lot of people, especially if you're feeling a little anxiety or angst, you need to get that book in all 15 chapters. The first five will give you all the ammunition you need to double down on what success looks like. But if it's about sales, that you want to talk about boom let's talk about my sales book so shameless plugs absolutely but let me give you because it is it's not about buying buy buy it's about give 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 so i would suggest some actual formulas so one everyone that's watching if you have a cell phone pull it out and if you bring out your phone and you bring up your calendar system if it's working correctly cheryl and i had a problem with mine but if it's working correctly <laughs> then i would coach you to do three things with your phone right now that will help you to be better connected to the marketplace as you in essence leave this in essence live stream today so if you pull up your calendar pull up monday pull up monday morning on your calendar and just arbitrarily pick any time you want around 9 10 11 in the morning set the timer on that for Monday and let's say 10, 17 AM. You want to make it an awkward minute on purpose. That way, what I'm going to have you put in your phone, I'm going to give you, your phone is going to become a phone virtual coach. That's going to help you to be successful technique. So let's say you pick 10, 17 AM. The likelihood you're ever going to need to schedule something in your phone at 10, 17 is probably going to be zero versus if you put it in at 10 or 10, 15 or 10, 30, then the first time you have to schedule something at that time, you're going to delete me and that's your biggest mistake in life. So if you now put this in your phone on Monday at 10, 17 a.m., you want to hit it so it repeats every Monday for the rest of your life and simply put a note to yourself that says deploy, D-E-P-L-O-Y, deploy rule 152X. 152X is a technique I teach to every sales professional on the planet, every sales manager on the planet, every business owner on the planet. 152X. 1-52-X. I'm putting that in the chat so everybody can see And that. anyone who's watching this live stream, anyone who's watching this live stream as a solo practitioner, I just gave you a huge clue as to why your businesses are not successful. The reason most every small business person or solo practitioner's business is not as successful as they would like it to be, regardless of what they PR and tell everyone outside their house, is because the last thing most every business entrepreneur actually likes to do is to make a sales call. We love everything about our business except making a sales call, especially making a cold call. So what 152X represents Monday, so that's what one, 52, there's 52 weeks in a year, so every week in a year, 152X. X is the magic to the formula. So you're going to do this every Monday, one, every week of the year, 52. 
X represents a demographic you want to reach out to that week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So let's say I'm back to Linda, your catch a minute ago, and there are um, 15 hairstylists in the local community that I sell product, <laughs> I want to sell product to. Well, I can in essence get those 15 people as an example. And if I mail them an email or mail you a letter, so it's going to get in your hands by Monday, it simply says, hi, I'm Jeffrey McGee. I have this company. I sell this product. I'd love to visit with you about carrying my product. Uh, I'm going to reach out and give you a phone call in the next two or three days. Here's my phone number if you want to reach me. And I hit send. Now, let's say I have 15 people. I can easily commit to making 15 phone calls in the next three days, which is what most people suck at doing, which is growing their business. And especially right now when everyone's freaking out, everyone's thinking, oh, my God, what do I do? So now that's 15. Now, the beauty is we all have when our phone rings. So if I mail it out to 15 people and one of them says, oh, my gosh, it's exactly what I need because my normal vendor I can't get a hold of because they're closed. Let me call this Jeff McGee guy and see if I can buy some hair care product from them. Now that's Linda's story she shared a minute ago. I just made a sale. Now I've got 14 others to make a call too. Let's say I use Linda's story she gave and I have 200 hairstylists in the local community. Well, the reality you're going to make 200 phone calls this week is between zero and not happening because most of people will never make that many phone calls. Right. So let's be realistic. Now my 152X could be broken down into 15250. Now maybe I take my list of 200 and I commit to mail out to 50 of them this week and make phone calls. Next week's the next 50. The next week's the next 50. So for the next month, I have people. Or I hire a VA in the Philippines to find lists of names in my geography or, or some other zip code in the United States I want to go into. So now I can commit. So the beauty of 152X is now how do I get myself rebooted to start making sales calls and I'm freaked out and I think the sky is falling and everyone else thinks the sky is falling and I turn on the news, which there's your biggest mistake, viewers. The worst okay. thing you all can be doing is watching the news because everyone on the planet that cannot get a real job is a journalist. If they could get a real job, they wouldn't be a journalist. That's why they are a journalist because all they know how to do is to bitch and complain. <coughs> I was raised as a Absolutely. journalist. I was an award-winning journalist in Kansas City. I left that industry in the 80s because it was so negative. And I was taught as a journalist, if I'm going to report something, I need to have two people that don't know each other to corroborate my report before I journalists have no facts to back up what falls out of the mouth. They make crap up out of a whole cloth and they present it and people are dumb enough to listen and believe it. So now back to Lynn and just catch with her little study about her in essence hairstylist. Everyone's going negative versus getting smarter. There's tons of opportunity out there right now because people are not looking for it. So 152X is your way of getting your name out and there's a lot of ways of doing it. Another quick answer to what we're here to talk about, how to increase your financial prosperity by helping others is, in, in, you know, for the last 10 years, the big theme in marketing, especially online, because you all are watching us online, has been all of these people that sell how to do online internet marketing, all of these prognosticators that want you to buy all of their deliverables, so they teach you how to do it, which the majority of them are all fraud artists anyway. Yes, I said that because the majority of them, the only money they're making is selling you the crap that they have that really doesn't work. But if you actually have a tangible tool you sell, it's always fun to ask them, well, give me five people that sell hair care product using your online drip funnel concept that are making money. They never can do that. Or tell me three other speakers in the National Speakers Association, since I show you by that group up that are actually using your email direct mail marketing campaign and making money. No one can ever do that. So there's your common sense. I encourage everyone to turn on what's inside your head called common sense before you do anything. But with that said, since I do have a graduate degree in marketing back in the old days, we used to do things called mail. All the email is, is, is an advanced version of mail. It's another touch point and distribution channel. So with that said, what I would encourage everyone to do in, and Linda, you hit it huge is it's about ask and it's about give. And what you have to figure out is what is your formula? It's give, 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 ask. So is it you give two things before you ask? Is it give one before you ask? Is it you give five before you ask? I just gave you the secret sauce right there to everyone who's teaching you and trying to sell you their email marketing campaigns. So again, if you're over 40, think about it. We used to go to a shopping mall and the shopping mall was the pet store. And if you were a parent, you hated going to the shopping mall where there was a pet store if you had a small child, because if you walked past it, there was a little kitties and little puppies in the window, which would suck your child into the store. And it was called the puppy dog sell clothes for a reason, which young people have no idea what that technique means, but that was it. They would say, oh, Miss Hollander, here, take the puppy home for the weekend. If you and your daughter don't like it, bring it back on Monday. <laughs> the likelihood you're bringing it back on Monday is zero. They just made a sell. Or you're in Main Street, USA, and you're walking down the street, and there's an ice cream you know, parlor on the, on, the, on the block, and they'd be outside and give you a little taste sample of the ice cream. If you liked it, they'd suck you in the store. That's an example of give, 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 ask. So Love it. I'm a big believer in giving. So if you have a lot of great articles, now's the time to repurpose them and re-give them out to your clients. If you, in essence, normally sell some webinars, give one out free, those sort of things. I have leadership and sales 
I did an email campaign just yesterday to answer again, validating, and I'll shut up and let you keep going with your next question. But you asked, how do we do these things differently? But I've got 40, I have 40 ready to go turnkey webinars that are 45 minutes in length that are around the issue of sales. And I have the same thing in leadership, but I'll just talk about sales because that's our focus here with revenue and sales. And those in essence, I can do them live or I can let you click and watch them and they're already archived as an online. And what makes my stuff different than most everyone else is everything I do is either academically credited from one of my four graduate management textbooks or they're CPE accredited because I do a tremendous amount of work with CPAs and attorneys in that industry. You have to have 40 credit hours every year to keep your license. So everything I do is CPEIs. So I sent that email out to 40 potential buyers yesterday that I want to pick up the phone with. What's interesting is before I had a chance to start to call any of those 40, three had already emailed me back saying, how do we do this? I want to hire you. Nice. So that's the give. And what I offered was to do one free before they ever even have to buy any. Love so it. I love your statement. Give whatever you can to help people. But this is a capitalist society. We were formed in the United States of America. There's only three reasons we were created as a country. For those of you that forgot to read the Constitution or the articles, the Federalist Papers, and one of the reasons we're a country, and we <laughs> said we don't want that king running us anymore, was we're capitalists. It's business. Yeah. So I am also a big believer that people need to open up their checkbooks if they're going to hire you and I, because at the end of the day, this is our professions we do. So yes, give to help free, but I'm not, in essence, missionary work. I'm not a preacher. I ain't doing this for free all day long. I got you. By the way, thank you both for being here and uh, doing this event for us. I think uh, it's something that we can uh, are doing exactly what we're talking about and what we're preaching is to give, 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 give. So thank you very much for being here. So I like what you said, Jeff, Dr. Jeff, about not uh, watching the news. Like I haven't turned on the news in the house. Like I do not allow it. Like it just isn't going to happen. And when we're in the car, it's music and it's not about, it's not about, you know, what, you know, the world is up to. So, but there are, you can't help but get a feed or, or hear something, or even in the grocery store, people People are talking. So, Linda, um, you know, when you hear the words economic tsunami and recession, depression, economic wave, you know, we're in lockdown, three million jobs are lost, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How are you in your world of, you know, waking up every day and, and working with your clients, controlling how you feel? Like, what are you doing to make sure that you're, you know, staying up here and being the light and being the joy and being the, the leader of uh, what we're going through right now? Okay, well, first of all, I want to echo what Dr. Jeff said, because uh, I said, what am I going to do? I made a video, no charge, about sponsorship in uncertain times, and I sent it out to my email list, and a lot of people consumed that short video, 11 minutes long, yeah. and the same thing happened to me. They called me, and they said, please, let's work together. So, you know, his mantra of give, give, give. Uh, eventually, yeah, you got to feed your family, you got to sell something. <laughs> but I think we've got to pivot with the times. I also gave up listening to the news before I went to bed, because it's so bad for all that negative stuff to come in your head. Uh, mm -hmm. And when you're almost falling asleep, that is when you are most vulnerable to suggestion. Uh, and so uh, I don't do that. I'm kind of a rebel. And I think most people who start businesses are rebellious, like nobody going to tell me what to do. Nobody going to tell me that uh, I can't go out to my with my dad. I, I have a daddy date every, <laughs> every Sunday. And so now I take him to my house. Uh, we do takeout, you know, and it's a big group that comes over to my house. Nobody going to tell me that I can't really be with my family because for me, family is first. I'll tell you a little story that I call the pa Paris penthouse story. Uh, there were some bombings in Paris. I don't remember, know if you remember that, but it was a few years ago. And we had reservations uh, to go to Paris. And uh, so we went there, but a lot of people canceled. Uh, when we got there, the guy at the hotel said, how would you like the penthouse for the cost of a room? <laughs> and if you've ever been to Europe, you know that the rooms are modified closets. Correct. Because other people canceled and we didn't and we kept our heads when everybody else was losing their minds, uh, we got the penthouse. Oh, my God. Wrap around balcony, uh, wine, cheese, <laughs> fruit when we came, uh, double sinks, an entrance foyer. Uh, you know, we didn't even want to leave this room and a view of the Eiffel Tower. So we could see that light show that happens every hour on the hour. Uh, and if you do what other people won't do, <laughs> at some point, you're gonna be able to do what other people can't afford to do. 
So right. do what other people are not doing. That's huge. I mean, I don't mean to jump in, but you know, this is absolutely powerful for those of you that are listening and for us to listen to our own self, but you're right. Yeah. If we are willing really to do good. what Thank others you, are not going to do, th that's what leads to success. You talk to any successful person, business person, athlete, entertainer, musician, political leader, entrepreneur, you know, Linda hit it right in the middle of the bullseye. They're there because they were willing to do what everyone else, they also saw that path, but they weren't willing to do it. So absolutely kudos. Beautiful. And, and the same question to you, Dr. Jeff, uh, what are you doing on a daily basis to keep your, to keep your uh, joy muscle is what I call it, you know, vibrating into the, into the universe and radiating more of, you know, what it is that you do, like where, where, how, where is it for your mindset and how do you keep it there? I love it. And I'm, I'm going to start with some <laughs> of the very same things you said a minute ago. So I'm not, not connected to news information, what's going on in the planet. I mean, I'm not putting my head in the dirt and ignoring it. You can't do that. You have to be aware. Yes. But as, as someone who grew up as a journalist and before I went to college, I had thousands of articles published in a major daily newspaper. You know, so I, I that's a part of my DNA. So I, on a regular daily basis, do get news feeds, but I try to be very objective. So I'll listen to CNN and I'll listen to Fox diametrically opposed. I might watch ABC, NBC, CBS, <laughs> do some things online. So I don't get my news from any one person. So I try to get it from several so I can kind of bounce in the middle. What's reality and where's the BS meter going? So that's one. So I do that as you may comment yourself, but things I do. So my day from 35 days ago to today, it really has not changed at all. So let me explain it. So the two places I really live in, in terms of what my business is, is I do leadership development for business owners and leaders in their organizations. And through that, I have a whole series of leadership programs and products. Look on my website for that. Uh, and I do sales. And so within that, I do, you know, speaking at conferences, conventions on stages. I speak uh, small groups, executive training. I do podcasts. I do webinars, live streams. We're doing them right here. Um, I spend some time writing each day. I do my own marketing now that I sold my company. I used to have 144 employees and uh, that business is still in business. But I sold my one third ownership. So what I was doing bigger then and I had employees. Now I own all of that myself unless I VA outsource some of that. So for example, today started at 4 a.m. So I slept in a little bit. I was a little bit lazy. I got up at 4 a.m. Basically at 530, I'm on my on my computer and doing a two hour modified version of my leadership academy of excellence, which usually is a one day full day program with a client. They, they contact with me for a year. I come in and work with that CEO and his or her senior leadership team or however they want to define that. And we make magic happen to the course of that year and really grow people to be phenomenal leaders with that whole, what I believe is your number one asset you have in the business, which is your human capital, not necessarily your financial capital, your brick and mortars and et cetera. So I've got a client that's in Michigan this morning at 530. I went on two hours live. They had 30 people on the screen in their little uh, you know, uh, uh, platform they're using. I do that. I'm teaching leadership program. That one's done basically at 730 at eight o'clock. I had a coaching conference call with one of my CEO clients at nine o'clock. I had a coaching call with the adjutant general of one of the states that I deal with. I do leadership work there as well. And I do sales training for the recruiting battalion there as well. Their state happened to be one of the top five states in the nation last year. Hmm, that could be a clue. The number one salesperson in the nation as a recruiter was from that state. Hmm, that could be a clue. All the states that sucked. Don't use Jeff McGee, but that's a sidebar. I love to have all this quantifiable data to back up stuff. So that was now, boom, here I am doing this live stream with you. When I get done with this, I have 30 minute break to grab something to eat for lunch. Then I have a one o'clock. In essence, I'll do a one hour webinar with another client in Phoenix. It was going to be a live on site program, but the need for the topic is still there. But instead of, in essence, me flying to Phoenix because the world is all freaked out, we're going to do it via webinar. So back to Linda, your catch earlier. It's not canceled. It was rescheduled and I've repurposed it into a different platform here. So we'll do a video. That's at one. So then at three o'clock, I've got a coaching call and then I'll probably take a break and go do something exciting. So that's my day. And that would have been a normal day before I would have been flying somewhere, presenting or flying back home and doing the work in between yesterday afternoon. I had kind of a lull in the normal day because again, 35 days ago, I wouldn't have been available yesterday. I would have been on a plane. So now I look at that new day in my, in my calendar's new inventory. So I actually worked on an eight, uh, lettered email letter campaign to launch next Monday afternoon to, you know, hundreds of C-suite names I have in my database. And I identified basically a different email campaign. I'll send this out on day one. It's a give. I'll send this out on day two. It's a give. 
I'll send this out on day three. It's a give. And I'll send this out on day four. It's going to be an ask. So day one's going to be a give. It's an article. Day two is going to be a video vlog. So back to Linda, just like your short one you talked about. So I have a different give each day. And I also publish a national magazine. So I have some extra luxuries other people don't have. So I'm going to give them a digital copy. That one. So again, it's give, 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 and then an ask, but it's a new way of, of repositioning myself. So part of the answer is what's a day for me look like with what's going on with the pandemic? Nothing at all has changed. And then the other part is, yeah, some things have radically changed. And I look at my calendar for the next 30 days, all of those live presentations, which have some have been canceled because there's some conferences where they've given up and others are client events that have simply been rescheduled. So I'm looking, okay, what do I need to do to generate revenue? Because that's again, part of the theme of this conversation today. And what do I have in essence, I can budget forward based upon how I saved money in the past. So all that this pandemic is a new way of looking at things. And folks, right. here's the good news. I don't care what your political view is. There is no way this country is going to be shut down come May 1st, because if we're not opened up for business at some level by April 15th at the latest, we have a whole different level of conversation because the best news is I don't care what your political views are, but it's a damn good thing. We've had the people running this country for the last three years. We've had running it because we've had the best financial in almost every category in the past three years that this country's had in its history. So again, I don't give a crap what your political views are. So right now, if you're hearing negative because of what McGee just said, then you probably should just sign off this live stream because you're too stupid <laughs> to get these things. You're allowing negative stuff to dominate your head. Yeah, you got to have about, a fresh perspective about bingo. everything right now. I mean, think of the, the, the economy is tanked, yes, and Wall Street is tanked, yes, and we had some huge losses just in the last 10 days. But if you flip that around, we've also had the greatest gains in 80 years also yeah. in the last three days. So, I mean, we we are very resilient as Americans. The but in this though is the majority of America are solo practitioner business professionals and small business people. And they're right now struggling. Yes. 15 days into this, the is the longest anyone's been shut down. Most everyone's only been shut down seven to eight days, but I'm in Nevada. Our governor shut us down 15 days ago. So we're still okay right now. We really are. If we open the door tomorrow morning, but we're not opening the door tomorrow morning. So, so we're now at that element of what's going to happen in the next 14, 15 days. But by April 15th, if we're not opening back up, folks, we're going to have a different live stream because it's going to be a whole different conversation then. Yes. I don't think the world will let that happen. So fingers crossed and giving it out to the, to the world that, you know, it's going to. Optimism, it's baby. Because Optimism and abundance me. mentality. There's, That's there's no other go. way. There's no other way. So Linda, you talked a little bit about slowing down, reflecting, being bullish in what it is that you want to do and, you know, not staying away from family and friends and all of that. So kind of a twofold question. Um, you, you kind of already answered that with with family. But if you want to um, kind of expound a little bit on how what slowing down looks like right now for you and 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 what new opportunities are exploding for you, like is there's like you, you said you sent the email, both of you are sending email campaigns. Um, I've been networking, like I was on a seven o'clock call last night networking. Um, there's so many people to meet, like and there's so, so many people that we didn't even talk about the coronavirus till the last five minutes. Like people were just eager to like, let's, let's, let's get going. So it, it was, it was a different conversation. Interesting, I thought, um, and I think powerful. So um, I'm starting a speakers bureau, as you know, and, you know, I've been reaching out to just tons and tons of people and, and people are, are continuing on the conversation, but it's nice to slow down and think about what the possibilities are. So as far as slowing down and thinking about possibilities and opportunity, what's going on with you, Linda? Uh, I'm kind of like uh, Dr. Jeff. Uh, I'm kind of doing the same things that I was doing before, but it's different because now I have more time to plan. I have more time to reflect. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm making a plan. So I have six months worth of income and, you know, that's going to put me ahead and that's going to make me sleep better at night because most people don't have that. Uh, as far as where I get my strength, once again, it's family. Uh, one of my challenges in life was that I was in an abusive relationship and I stayed in it for years because my confidence was so low and I thought that was really the best that I could do. Yeah. But starting my business got me out of that relationship because I got empowered and I said, I'm going to dump this dude, uh, which I did. And three weeks later, I met my husband and my husband and I are have always worked at home. Uh, he's got his office space. I've got my office space. Um, so we're not really <laughs> driving each other crazy right That's now. Right. 
That's great. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we've been married for almost 23 years. And a lot of times when I would speak, he would come with me and we'd have some great adventures together. Uh, nice that's not happening now, but I'm planning for later in the year for it to happen. Uh, I also have a very strong love for animals. Uh, and my, our, our cat is just so happy because she gets mommy and daddy uh, yeah. to give her hugs and kisses and snuggles all day long. That's beautiful. <laughs> uh, so, and as far as you asked about new opportunities, people are consuming webinars. People are consuming live stream like never, ever before. So yeah. this is the time to do that. And I want to make one comment about virtual. If you're doing an event like you're doing an event and you have to reschedule it, don't just make it virtual. Say it'll be virtual for now, but we're still going to have the live event because that's going to keep your sponsors. That's going to keep your attendees. And as I said before, people are going to come to events. They are going to gather when we can in droves. So don't just go a virtual, have it virtual and a live event. It gives you a much better value add. I love it. Thank you very much for that. You always give me, you know, warm fuzzies. And I think that's really important right now. I, I'm, I, you know, they're, they're talking about people hearing the birds chirp and the skies are clearing up in China. Like there's all kinds of things and opportunities to look at that are different now. And so thank you for that. Um, what about resources, Dr. Jeff? Is there anything out there if somebody is like kind of hit a wall or maybe something that wasn't working 35 days ago still isn't working and they're not feeling, uh, you know, what the next steps are. Any ideas, any suggestions about where people might go for advice and support? Great question. So let me answer that with a formula. I'm kind of a formula guy is how my brain always works. Give me the ABCs. Uh, you know, Professional Performance Magazine is a global magazine, 470,000 <laughs> subscribers. And it allows me to access phenomenal personalities. I've done interviews with the last three presidents of the United States, last four first ladies, world leaders, you know, all-star, you know, athletes, et cetera. Phenomenal people. Richard Branson writes for my magazine on a regular basis. He and I have done two books together. So one of the things I would share to answer that question, one, anyone watching this, if you reach out to me, I'll get you a free subscription to Performance Magazine. There's always about 25 different contributors in there. Um, it's, it's always evergreen. Um, organic editorials. So the articles are designed to be, you know, living forever. I've had Joel Osteen, for example, is a friend of mine, writes in the magazine. He's obviously going to come from kind of a religious standpoint, but his articles are not about religion. I may have a, you know, a federal political person, whether Republican or Democrat, and I got friends on both sides. I don't want to hear about your political views. It's always about success, you know, the roadmaps and those elements. So one is start reading online or hard print. Yes, hard print still alive, folks. It's never going to die. Yep. You know, I'm pretty sure when Gutenberg created the printing press, no one said, holy crap, no one's ever going to talk again. It's all going to be in written format. It's just another distribution channel is all that digital is. But but I would look at magazines like Performance Magazine. And so the reason I said what I said, I'm not advertising because I said I'll give you a free subscription, yep. is that look for online informational delivery vehicles that will give you raw information on how to be successful without everyone else's opinion and spin on it. And that's why I like Performance Magazine is it's not a spin. It's not my view. Uh, Les Brown's a friend of mine, and I did an interview with him for this one. And basically, it was questions all about success from his lens, not my lens. So that's one. So I'd look at periodicals you can get right now. I think both of you ladies also just said it right now online, live stream, webinars, video posts uh, have just exploded because everyone's landlocked. And so now, holy crap, what do I do with an extra hour of my day that I didn't think I had 35 days ago? Now everyone has an extra hour, basically. It's oh, how to be sure. smartly invested. So I would, I would look at those. Second, I would go to some of the leading institutions in America, whether you like them or not, they're the leading institutions. So again, take your bias out. But Harvard has tons of classes online. Um, they're free. You don't have to pay for them. I mean, some okay. of the faculty at Harvard have just put their entire classes up there. There's a gentleman up there uh, right now on justice. He's a, a, a legal scholar and he has a, a class that looks like it's probably freshman, sophomore, because it's a huge amphitheater sort of style with hundreds of people in the room, but uh, the justice files. And so he does a basically a, a 45 minute class and they tackle all kinds of topics. It's fascinating because he gets the audience, these kids involved. So now he's getting these basically young millennial, older generation Z people involved in a topic that you and I might see through our adult lens. So the second answer is I look at the academics. Let me hit pause, a formula. So when someone says, Jeff, what book should I read or what are you reading? How I 
I typically is I don't answer it. I don't say, well, you know, there's a class. Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends, Influence People. If you haven't read that one, it's time to get that off the shelf and reread it. Or, or or Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Or Jim Collins' Good to Great. I mean, there's tons of books I could, I could give. But I give a formula. I think if you're going to always grow yourself, number one, you should always be exposing yourself to the word academic. If you were to look at what you do as a profession and there was a college degree in that area, whether you have a degree or not, it's not what I'm advocating. But if what you look at what you do, if there was a college degree in that, what would be the academic textbooks that you would be being asked to buy as a student to read in that class? So go online. Pearson Education is the largest uh, textbook publisher in the world. You can go to their website. You can just Google search these things. But think about, okay, so if I want to learn more about, in essence, uh, veterinary science and pets and cats, because my name is Linda and I now have got a cat and I'm going to spend more time with them. And I was thinking, okay, so there's an <laughs> academic degree. What would be the book I'd be taking in college? And then, again, the second category then is pop. What's the popular book or popular video or popular online you know, blog, blogger to follow? So, again, if I come back to management, I should be reading a college textbook on management on all times. I should be reading those on a regular basis, one or two or three or four of those uh, a month or a year. What's the pop book that Barnes & Noble says or Amazon says this is the number one selling book in business in this area? Buy that one. Your peer group you hang around, what's the book they're all reading? You know, Tuesdays with Maury or whatever. What's the pop book all your friends are reading or colleagues or peer group? You want to read that one. That's one, two, three. Who's actually doing what you want to do? That could be different than an academic author or someone on the sideline sure. writing. Who's Who's actually doing what you do or what you want to do and do they have a book out there is there a autobiography by that person who maybe is alive or dead that was a rock star in the category of what you want to do or you are doing what's their biography go in and read that so I just gave you five categories of what you could be looking at reading or watching or going to to grow yourself in this time and if you're a parent one of the things I talked about on a, on a video uh, uh, podcast just this week, you know, the three of us, if we're parents and we're going to dedicate some time to maybe take a 30 minute online, you know, CPE course or a class or just watch a program or whatever to help us become more informed on a topic we want to look at and your kids of the age, have them park their butt right in front of their tablet or TV or on your internet screen on TV and have them watch an educational program. Because if you want them to watch an educational program and they see you doing it, they'll be much more inclined to say, hey, you know what, this is just not like a penalty box. This is for the next hour, we're all going to go into learning mode. So again, K-12, every major school district in America should, and if they don't, then here's an opportunity to have learned that everyone on that school board and administration should be fired coming out of this pandemic. But every major school board, has, school district has a website. And on the website, they a lot of times have a section there of all of their online courses. So you could go take some online courses there and your kids should be taking online courses. So the mere fact your kids may be home from school is no excuse for them not to be spending three, four, five, six hours a day learning right Right now because it's all there. I mean, I grew Absolutely. up on a farm in Colorado and I remember a whole lot of times winter, something new that would happen every day. We don't have winter anymore. Winter would come and you'd have snow days and you'd be stuck at home for three, four, five days. You still had schoolwork to do. So you've hit a really you know sensitive vein with me because I'm in the business of education with, with practitioners and real business people. So yeah. you always should be growing your brain. Benjamin Franklin's line is huge. The person who empties their purse into their head will never be bankrupt. So again, what are you putting in your head during this pandemic time? I love it. My God, I'm inspired. I'm, oh, I'm, <laughs> life is good. Um, let, let, I'm going to do a little plug and then I'm going to ask each one of you to do something about what's going on in your business that you need the world to know about. So, um, okay. so as you know, my event is May 30th. It's the launching of Joyly in the world. And I invite businesses and families all over the country or in the world, really, um, to get a ticket. And then you can have our live stream. You can do 20 people for $27 in your living room. And, um, you know, if you're in Las Vegas and we will be running by May 30th, please come and join us. So we're going to have 250 people at the Rhythms Event Center, which is in North Las Vegas, sort of over by the north, excuse me, the north end of the strip um, by the stratosphere. So it's a beautiful uh, center. There's a hundred thousand uh, dollars worth of sound equipment in there. It's just going to, it's going to be incredible. We have this live performance coming. So in Joyly, we teach the formula where it's find, be, or share your joy. So if you don't know where your joy is, then let's find something. If you do know what it is, then let's become better at it, or let's go out in the world and be it and give it Great. away. And then share. If you're if you're just doing it and making your jewelry or whatever you're doing at home, well, maybe the world needs more of it. Maybe we can teach you how to do an Etsy store. So anyway, we'll be talking about the Joyly formula, and we'll have this big, beautiful chair, if you can see it, 
on stage and uh, we'll be live streaming those wishes. And uh, we're kind of like the March of Dime for entrepreneurs, people say. So ask for what you want and put it out in the universe. So we're super excited about that event. And uh, Linda and I have an amazing conversation on, on Monday. I cannot wait. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about sponsorships and how to bring in um, some of those people for that event. Um, and we were gifted yesterday. Thank you, Las Vegas Entrepreneur Magazine with a full page feature, complimentary. And uh, yeah, they uh, they saw the chair and I took it out to the mountain and people are like, what are you doing? Why are you bringing this chair out by the mountain? And I, I just- Branding, like, baby, why branding. Are you, why are you bringing your living room? And I just was like, you know, it made you smile. And that's all that matters. You know, we did our social distancing and and uh, we laughed and we had a good day. And and so, yeah, they got wind of it. And I think it's I think it's fun for everybody to have a little focus on joy. So, Linda, what's going on in your uh, in your service world that you could share with the world that people? Why do they need you right now? I guess is my question. <laughs> OK, well, first of all, I want to offer something free to everybody that's listening. If you go to successwithsponsors.com. That's successwithsponsors.com. You'll get the number one secret to getting sponsors. That is my gift to you. Uh, also, uh, I loved what you said, and I love your business created around joy, because usually we hear about joy during the holidays, right? And you want to make joy a theme in everybody's life every day of the year. Now, this moment. Now at yes. this moment. So uh, I, I love it. I think Thank what you've you got is great. And I think we don't really think about the joy in our life that much. Uh, so uh, I want to just tell everybody listening to don't worry if you don't have uh, a lot of time in your business. You're just opening up your business. If you're just starting out, don't worry. If you don't have experience, don't worry. If you don't have a big following, don't worry. Everybody had to start somewhere. So hold your head up high. Know that you have value yeah. to offer to clients, to sponsors, to your attendees, to the people who read your books, to the people who listen to your trainings. Uh, uh, just kind of know that. And it, you know, the Susan G. Coleman, she started in a garage. Uh, Nancy Brinker started it because Susan G. Coleman was her sister. Yes. And she told her husband, she says, I want to do something. And her husband pulled out uh, and she says, I want to start something in the garage. And he said, please, don't call any of our friends. She said, okay, I won't. And what do you think he did? <laughs> she did what he pulled out of the garage. She called everybody. Yeah. And, you know, because of Susan G. Komen, they have changed so many lives. They have saved so many women. Uh, the, there's so much education out there. Uh, there's a whole community of survivors out there because she had the guts to start something in her garage when she had no experience, no connections, nothing. So yeah. anybody could do that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and things unfold naturally and magically. Like, you know, when I started this, you know, four or five months ago, I didn't know that we would be in a world, you know, crisis. And so I think that, you know, as hard as hard as it is, it's absolutely perfect timing. And so we are, you know, going forward full 100%. Thank you for that, Linda. I appreciate that. Sure. And Dr. Jeff McGee, services or anything you would like to add or offer? I put both of your websites and your uh, emails in there so people can reach out to you. Perfect. So I, I love what Linda just said. So again, if you email me, I will give you a free subscription digitally to the magazine. So here's one with the Ness and Richard Branson on the cover. Ooh. And guess what? There she is right there. There's Nancy Brinker. She in essence was in essence in our magazine as well. There she is right there. Boom. Oh my so couldn't be a better commercial. Great lady. So she's written for us again. We get phenomenal people to write. So one, email me, go to my website. If you email me, I'll give you a free digital subscription to the magazine. If you give me your email address, we're not going to spam you or sell you things. Second, uh, if you also email me, we'll give you a free digital copy of this sales book right here. So that'll save you $40. It's my newest sales book that's out. I'll nice. even give you that digital book. The way to read that book is not from chapter one to the back of the book. Glance down the table of contents. Find a topic of a chapter that will help you right now, address an issue you have right now, read that chapter. So if it's about finding new leads for my business, there's information there, how to do it. People are saying no to you right now to maybe turn no's into a maybe into a yes. There's formulas for that as well. So though that's two things I'm more than happy to, to plus up as a value add for you all being a part of this 
live stream today or if you're watching it in an archive time uh, as a way of saying thank you to Cheryl for letting us all come on. So that's two. Um, right. Third, on my website under resources, I do uh, three e-zines articles. If you want to sign up for those, every Monday I send an article out that deals with leadership and in, uh, in, in revenue generation. More than happy to do that one. Plants a seed every Monday in your head. You can sign up for personal development. I do a personal development article every Wednesday. And you can uh, sign up for the leadership article if you want on Friday. Those are three high value articles I write each week. I don't sell you a thing. I actually give a part of my mental DNA because as Linda said earlier, it's about giving. And so that's three elements there. Uh, the one thing that I'd ask is under events in June, I will be doing my two day performance driven selling boot camp again, also here in Las Vegas. I do those once each quarter. So there's more information on my website for that program. Uh, the date, the time, the location. You can even download the agenda, um, what it costs, the early bird fees. Everything's right there under the events section on my website, Performance Driven Selling. Um, that was an event that was going to be being held on Monday and Tuesday of next week. Obviously, all of the casinos and convention meeting space in our city has been closed, as well as the rest of the planet. So it's not been canceled. It's been rescheduled. Exactly. So those are ways we can keep helping you. And that's the next event that I'm doing that you as a viewer um, can find out more. So Cheryl, let me know about your event and I'll push it to my followers. Linda, let me know about your next event. I'll push that one to my followers. And uh, again, anyone who wants to come and roll up their sleeves and learn actual strategies and techniques for selling, the program I'm doing is exactly the same program that I deliver to my Fortune 100 clients every day of the year and they pay a lot of money. I'm making an open enrollment to the public because I don't believe there is a good sales training program for solo entrepreneurs or anyone to go to. Beautiful. So I don't know about you, but everybody listening, if you didn't hear give, 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 ask from both of these just amazing uh, speakers just now, um, you know, please go rewind and watch it again because the gifts that you just offered were absolutely incredible. And I don't know if that's a sign of the times or that's just your nature in general. I'm guessing it's your nature in general. Am I right? Yes. Formulas don't change because the times change. You just double down on what works. Beautiful. Well, namaste, and uh, I, I just Thank invite you. everyone. I invite everyone to go out and practice their joy muscles, and uh, give, 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 and uh, ask for what it is that you need. Don't be afraid to put it out in the world what you need, so that you're not sitting there isolated and alone. So, www.joyly.com, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye, bye. Thank you, guys. Bye, bye. Bye.